Let's now look at driving loads and how the type of load impacts the amount of current that the transmitter will have to provide and how we need to be aware that uh, the type of load can significantly increase the output current that a transmitter will provide and we need to be careful not to violate the output maximum current specs. Okay, so we're going to have some transmitter and I'll just draw, draw it as a simple buffer and it's going to drive something. So that's the point of this digital system is, is it's producing ones and zeros which are received by something else. So out here, whatever's on the low or whatever the receiver is, let's call it a, usually a receiver means some active device, but whatever's out here, whatever you're driving, that is technically called the load. So that's just the term that we use. Now the load can be anything. It can be another gate. It can be a couple gates. It can be a resistor, it can be a resistor going to ground, resistor going up, it can be an LED, it can be it can be anything, it can be a relay, it can be a motor, it can be all sorts of things. So you, you, you notice that all of these look a lot different from each other and so they all have different characteristics and they all can consume or draw more current than you might expect out of the transmitter. So we need to look at some of the most common loads that a digital circuit drives and then start thinking about how we analyze it and just making sure that we don't exceed the maximum output current. Because what we're after here is we have I-O and it is going to be provided by the transmitter. The load takes whatever amount of current it wants. That's the way you think about a load. If this load decides it needs to take 10 milliamps, it's going to take 10 milliamps and it's going to pull it out of the I.O. or the output pin of the transmitter. Now that output pin, it will provide that current until it burns up. So that's just the way that this works. The worst case situation is you just take this and short it to ground. That will take an, essentially an infinite amount of current. This transmitter will just smoke and you're done. Okay? So we got to make sure uh, that we, when we connect the load, we know how much current it's going to drive and then we need to compare that to the specifications of the transmitter. Okay, so the most common, or one of, let's look at the most simplest and one of the more common ones of types of loads is driving other gates. So this is a situation where you're building a logic circuit and the logic circuit has, you know, it's, it's driving whatever, you have AND gates and OR gates and they're driving inverters and th this is what's on an integrated circuit, you know, usually a digital a large digital system. It's just gates driving other gates. And so your load itself is going to be simply another part from within the same logic family. But when you do that, they're designed to work with each other. And so if you just drive one gate to another gate, it should never be a problem, assuming that the interconnect is negligible. But where it does become an interesting situation is when you have multiple gates that you're driving with one single load. So it's a very simple analysis. Let's just draw it as a buffer driving another buffer, just to simplify things. And what we said is the rule is that the load takes what the load wants. So what is the, the current that the load of this gate would take? Well, you go to the data sheet and you look at what the II is for this gate. And the II, we talked about it, for CMOS it's very negligible. We almost, we pretty much always ignore it. Uh, for TTL, it might be very significant, but this II comes from the data sheet. So let's just say we had the II for this buffer was one microamp. Well, that load could take at any given time one microamp. Where does that one microamp get provided? Well, it gets provided by the IO. The load takes what it wants, so IO is going to be simply one microamp. So in this situation, the IO is whatever the load is taking. Now, that's what we have for I.O. So if the question was stated as, what is the output current of the transmitter when driving a buffer with an input current of one microamp? Well, it's simply one microamp. Okay? Now, where it becomes interesting is if you said, okay, I have a buffer and I'm driving three other buffers from the same logic family and the input specification for these buffers is that I.I is equal to one microamp. So the question is, what is the output current of the transmitter? Well, it's simply three microamps. So you're going to have one microamp here going into that buffer. You're going to have one microamp here, and you're going to have one microamp here. 
So if you use the rule of current, it's the current going into a node is the same as the current going out of the node. So if there's three microamps going out of this, that means there must be three microamps coming into it. Okay? Another way you can state this problem is by talking about fan out specifications. So a logic family might have a, a fan out specification of, let's say typically, I don't know, let's say eight. And what that means is that a gate can drive, or a single output pin can drive up to eight other gates from within the same family. Okay, not resistors, but just straight gates. So I could state the problem as, in the worst case, what would be the output current for driving the max fan out? Okay, so driving the max fan out, what is, what is I.O.? Put it like this, I.O. when driving the max fan out. And so what that means is that after you look at this huge amount of logic that's been created on the integrated circuit, you say, well, the worst thing that could ever happen, that's allowed to happen, is if there are eight other loads connected to this output pin. So there's eight of these right here, and you are going to say, well, how much current could each of those loads draw? So this is like considered one load. Well, it's going to be eight times the II. So I'd have eight times, in this situation, was one microamp. So the total would be eight microamps. So that's what would be pulled out of the I.O. pin of this device. So in this situation, the answer would be I.O. would be eight microamps. So that's how you do the analysis when you're driving other gates from within the same family. This is the simplest case because uh, logic circuits are designed to operate with each other within the same logic family.